Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to this series on the Cisco Unify Wireless Networking Solution. Today I would like to show you how to configure your controller and wireless infrastructure for secure authentication. This is something which is commonly a problem. So I would like to show you how you configure your controller, your ACS and your clients for classic secure authentication such as PEEP or EPTLS. First of all, some vocabulary. The client, the wireless client, is called the supplicant because this is the one asking for authentication. The access point slash controller in between do not play any real role in the authentication itself. They are called the authenticator because that's where you ask for authentication, but they do not authenticate the client. The device that authenticates the client is the authentication server which sits in the background. So there are two protocols coming into the play here, 802.1x and EEP. 802.1x has a specific role. Its role is to allow the authenticator, that is in this case the access point, to close the radio and not allow any access to the network to the supplicant as long as the authentication server has not agreed to the authentication. So in the authentication process, you will have the supplicant asking for authentication 811 authentication, to which the authenticator will answer yes without any question. And it's only when the supplicant will say, now I would like to go to the association phase, that the authenticator will say, hang on, we need to authenticate you now. And it's only when you will have been authenticated by the authentication server that you will be granted access to the network and that you'll get an association response. So the role of a 2 x is to block the radio for the supplicant as long as the authentication server hasn't authenticated the client. IP defines some standard messages that are going to be exchanged between the supplicant and the authentication server, such as, authenticate me please, what are your credentials, failure, success, these kind of messages. So a 2 x is used in combination with EEP to perform this authentication on the wireless network. As a side note, please notice that the client, the supplicant, is going to use 802.1x slash EEP dialog with the authenticator. And the authenticator is going to translate this 802.1x slash EEP dialog into radius to forward this request and the answers to the authentication server. A key element for you to understand is that the controller doesn't care about what kind of 802.1x or EAP type is used between the supplicant and the authentication server. The only thing your controller really cares about is if we are using a central server, an authentication server or not. If you are using a pre-shared key, the controller needs to know the key. If you are using an 802.1x slash EAP process, the controller just needs to know that there is an authentication server somewhere to which the request will be sent and between which the controller has to play the relay. But the detail of which sub-flavor is being used between the supplicants and the authentication server is of no interest for the authenticator. So everything here is played between the authentication server and the supplicant. And this is why, if you look at the controller configuration I have here as an example, you see have here four SSIDs, for the WLANs. If you take any of the IP-based WLANs I created, on the security tab, the only thing the controller really cares about is to know what will be the key. If it's going to be a WPA key, a WPA2 key, or if this is .1x authentication, or if it's a static web, that is to say a pre shared key type of authentication. And if it's WPA, WPA2, the controller needs to know that because it's going to manage the key itself. But as far as the authentication is concerned, the only thing the controller really cares about is, is this a .1x based authentication or is it a pre-shared key based authentication, in which case the controller needs to know the key. But if it's a .1x based authentication, the controller just doesn't care about which sub-flavor is being used between the client and the authentication server. As there are several flavors of .1x EAP, Let's have a look at the two most classical ones. The first one is EPTLS. In EPTLS, which is very secure, the authentication server 
and the supplicant both use a certificate authentication method. When the EAP process starts, and again this is a simplified uh, scenario, the server is going to send its certificate. The certificate is going to be used by the client as a key to encrypt whatever the client needs to send back to the server in an encrypted manner. So this certificate is a key and it's also a way for the client to authenticate the authentication server that is to say to verify that the authentication server is really the box that is supposed to authenticate this client. The client does the same uh, to the authentication server. It sends a certificate. That is to say it sends something to the server that will be used as an encryption method. So with a supplicant certificate the authentication server will be able to send encrypted values down to the client. And also with this certificate the authentication server is going to be able to authenticate the client. So the certificate is both a key to encrypt things and also a way to authenticate the other device. How does that work? And this is key for you to understand if you want to get how we configure it on the ACS and on the controller. Well, the certificate is a public key. So if the authentication server sends a public key, it has a private key that it will use to decipher what will be encrypted with this public key. The problem of certificates is that if the authentication server sends a key to the client, the client needs to ensure that the device sending the key is really the authentication server and not any device hacker in the network spoofing the identity of the authentication server. So how can we ensure that this key is genuine? Well, the best way is to have an external server, as you can see here on the top, that both the supplicant and the authentication server trust. Because there is this trust, the authentication server is first going to send its certificate to the authentication authority, which is called certification authority at the top, and the certification authority is going to sign, that is to say to certify, that this key is genuinely sent by the authentication server. So of course to do that there must be a secure uh, way of communicating between the authentication server and the certification authority at first. But once the authentication server key is signed by the certification authority, then the authentication server can send this key to, uh, to the supplicant and the supplicant will see the signature of the certification authority and the client can always check against the certification authority if this was really the signature of the certification authority or not. In this way, the, certifications, the authentication server will be able to send a certificate to the client and the client will be able to verify that this is really uh, trusted by the certification authority that therefore the authentication server is really the one it pretends to be. The same process will occur the other way back. The uh, supplicant will generate a pair of keys in which one will be the public key which is a certificate. The certificate will be sent for signature to the certification authority. Then the client will send the certificate to the authentication server with a CA digital signature. If the authentication server wants to verify the signature, it can always go back to the CA, certification authority, and verify that this is a real signature from the CA on the supplicant certificate. That way, with the system of external trust, both supplicant and authentication server can verify that the other is the one it pretends to be. And as this certificate is also a public key, both sides can use the other one's public key to encrypt whatever traffic they need to send back and forth. So this is very secure. Of course, there is a downside to that, is that both the supplicant and the authentication server need to have a certificate, which may be a heavy burden if you are uh, working in a large corporation with thousands of clients. Very often keys need to be deleted, certificates are not valid anymore, new certificates need to be emitted all the time, so this is a, a burden to manage. 